I'm going to talk to you about associated uh, associated token accounts um, on Solana. So what these are are basically whenever you get a uh, a token that's not Sol itself, let's say Serum, let's say an NFT, it actually is transferred to one of these associated token accounts, and then you own those token accounts. So you have your main account, which has a Sol in it. And then you have authority over these other accounts. Um, and then each of these accounts is specific for an NFT or a um, or a, uh, a token. So, you know, and actually when you create an NFT on your account, you also create this account for the NFT. So, um, okay, so uh, then the question is, how do you figure out what this uh, account is like what what is the address um it's actually deterministic so given the token address and your address you can figure out what is the associated token account address so it's not random it's not like you randomly generate some secret phrase or or something like that um you uh you actually can deterministically derive it so so we can uh, go ahead and use the blockchain api to derive it and uh, if you go to docs.theblockchainapi.com, you go to Solana NFT, and you go to get, um, so, sorry, not Solana NFT, Solana Wallet, and you go to derive an associated token account address, um, we can uh, basically just use this endpoint. So uh, the first thing is that, well, currently, um, currently just the way we coded it, it requires um, your, your wallet information, um, so like, you know, other endpoints do as well. Um, like when you're actually creating an NFT, it requires that so that you can spend soul to, uh, to create the NFT. I recommend, uh, basically just creating some sort of burner wallet, like a temporary wallet to test this endpoint and figure out how it works. Um, so hopefully, yeah, in the future we will, we'll change this so that you just need your public key. But what we do in our backend is we use this, derive the public key and then, and then get it. There's, there's a reason why we're doing this, um, and uh, I forgot, but it's not optimal. So now that we figured, now that I just stated that, um, in the future it'll just be public key, which will be better. Um, first, just look, you can go here to learn more about how it works, and then, um, and then we're gonna follow an example in Python. So this is an API, so you can, uh, you know, you can use any coding language, just post requests to this endpoint, with this in the, the body and uh, the API keys in the header. So we're gonna use Python because there's a Python wrapper just for that. Um, so first, let's get an API key and we'll write it down. So create new key. And uh, let's just uh, copy this down here. Okay. And um, you know, you can look through this example. Currently the only one filled out is um, this uh, Python example.py. Okay. And so it'll show you basically different, um, how it works for different tokens. So you have an NFT, you have an NFT on the DevNet, this one's on the mainnet, and you have like a, a non-NFT, so you know, a token, Serum's a, a different token on Solana. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we can just use, we can just make up a phrase. So, um, you know, now let's code. Uh, make sure you have the blockchain API installed. Uh, I'm typing in the bottom. You can see pip install the blockchain API. I already have it installed, but you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so now let's just uh, set our keys here. Okay, and let's import from the, the blockchain API, import the blockchain API resource. Let's also import the network. Okay, so now let's let's first uh, just set up the resource. So we'll just say resource. This is basically the, the purpose of this part is just it's initializing the class, um, which contains all the functions that we're going to use. And uh, and every time you use an API call, you're going to put your API keys in the header. So by putting it in the initialization of the class, it's already going to include it for you. So you don't need to do it every single time you call a function. So the first thing, let's just generate a secret key. Okay. Great. 
Okay, so um, that's the first step. Now let's um, let's uh, derive the um, token account address. So we have the token address, which we don't currently have, and our uh, you know our wallet information. So first, let's just say mint address equals. Let's get this NFT so we can see what this NFT is on mainnet. Musk coin. Okay. And we'll make sure that the network is a uh, mainnet. Okay. That this Solana network comes from the blockchain API package. Yeah, basically all this is is a uh, it ends up being a string like this. Okay. So now let's uh, go ATA equals, and we'll go ahead and print the ATA. Uh, in oh, whoops, okay. Yeah, because I had provided an empty string. Okay. Great, so that's what the associated token account address. Let's do one more, let's do two more things. So first, let's just look at what it is with uh, with Serum. Okay. Okay, great. It's just something else. Some other random. Yeah, that's different than that sort of C and Q. This one's a use it. You know, they're different. Okay, the next last thing, I'll just show you how it looks in the Solana Explorer. So first, let's uh, create a test. First, let's actually, sorry, that was an accident. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get what, it, what public key are we using? Okay, so let's just use the defaults that they're providing. Okay, let's first figure out what the public key is, okay? Okay, so we have that. So we can also go over here and see, okay, so right, zero soul, etc. Let's switch to devnet. Okay, now just to make sure that we're looking at the right key, let's just say get airdrop. Um, So every time you call this, it's going to generate a new secret key. So we're going to save it up here first. What I'm doing is I'm going to I'm going to re-derive the um, the associated token account address with an NFT that we're going to mint, so I can show you how it looks in the Solana Explorer. Okay. So now that we we save this, let's um, let's deterministically get an airdrop. So um, actually, so. Because we're gonna end up call, having called this twice, it's gonna be it should be 0 0.03 sold because each airdrop is 0 0.015. Okay, so this is the public key. Let's go here. Okay, so now we, we can just confirm. Yeah, this is you know we're looking at everything correctly. Okay, great. Next thing, let's create an NFT. Okay, so we also have sold now also in the devnet. Uh, so that we can do this. Okay. Great. So this is going to take about a minute, and uh, I'm actually just going to cut out the time it takes. It takes about 60 seconds, but there's no, t not worth waiting. Okay. So. Invented an NFT, you know, it has an empty name, empty symbol. So we can actually look at this on the devnet and it should be, you know, no NFT name, no symbol uh, because we didn't supply anything. Okay, so now that we have the NFT, we have the mint address, which is really the NFT address. Um, so we can replace that here. Okay, and now we can go over here and And we can see what the associ associated token account address is. Oh, whoops! I typed. <laughs> this should be API secret. That would be. That would make things clearer. Okay. There 
Okay, so this is the associated token account address. So if you look here, then it's in ZH5. So um, this is our account. If you look at the tokens, we have, I think this is the NFT, it ends in F6, right? Yeah, so this is the NFT. And uh, if you look here, actually, this is where we should look. There's one transaction. That's the one we made with minting the NFT, right? And if you go down here, it has the instructions of it. And um, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, that's, sorry, I was looking at the wrong transaction. Okay, so these are airdrops and stuff. Um, yeah, so first just look at this one. The most recent one is the one where we minted the NFT. And uh, this is the actual minting of it. And so if you scroll down here, you'll see ZH5 token plus one, okay? So um, token balances. So ZH5, that's the associated token account address that we derived here. And the token is the NFT address, right? And so it's basically saying this address got one more of this token, which makes sense because the associated token account address owns that NFT and we own that associated token account, okay? And so every time you make an NFT, you're going to also have a new associated token account address under the hood. Okay, so I hope that clears things up. I hope you find our API useful. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions, feedback, concerns in the comments. Thank you.